Welcome to the How I Met Your Mother podcast for the episode entitled Bad News. This is the 13th episode of the 6th season and the 126th episode of the series. With us today is Carter Bays, co-creator and executive producer, and Jenny Hendricks, script coordinator and writer of the episode. My name is Alec Lev, and welcome to you both. Hi, Alec. Hi. Carter Bays, um, yes, with this episode and the next one, which we don't want to give anything away about right now. We're, this, this podcast, we're, we're hearing this uh, We're hearing after this, this after this having seen after Bad News, aired. okay, but not having seen the following episode. Gotcha. But let's just say that these two episodes back to back are, uh, it's a, it's a big, got a big tomato happening. Yeah, here. we should say, uh, uh, and the bad news of bad news, uh. Yeah, if, if you haven't seen the episode, don't listen to this podcast. We should. But uh, and, and that turn off. We're all clear on that. Go watch it. Okay, now I we think can... spoiler alert is what people say. Go in for these it. situations. So. So let's assume spoilers we... ahead. Yes, go yeah. for it. So, um, was it always the plan from the beginning of the season that right here in the middle we would be giving this a uh, body blow? Uh, yeah, yeah. It was. It's. I mean, yeah, not to give too much away, but we we've sort of. Uh, before we started writing anything, we kind of structured out how the whole season's going to go, and a, a lot of the things that we did in the first half of the season were sort of putting things into place for this this moment in this episode. Uh, yeah, we, we kind of looked at it as it's, it's halfway through the season. It's episode 13, uh, so we were, or it's beginning the second half of the season, so it's... it's yeah, everything, everything before this was prologue, and now we're going to see things unfold uh, out of this. Very cool. So, Jenny, this is your first script for the show. Yes, it is. How long have you been in the writer's room? I've been in the writer's room since season three, and I've been on the show since season one. And what have you been doing in the writer's room until now? Until most, my job mainly consists of typing down everything that the writers say, uh, from breaking the story ideas to the actual words of the script. Uh, just to let us inside a little bit, tell us a little bit about how that actually works in there. And I know that you're working on two documents at one time. Yeah, there are, when we are writing the script, there are two documents open. There's one in Movie Magic Screenwriter, which is the actual script formatted. And then we have a second Word document open where we take down alternate pitches for jokes and maybe general thoughts on what we're going to cut out of the script. So as the writers... Jenny just <laughs> saluted, by the way, <laughs> when she said general thoughts. Uh, so as the writers pitch their jokes, we, we, take, we type them up and put them in the script. <laughs> uh, does, that wor- does that Word document, um, that trove of jokes that weren't used, does that exist somewhere? Is that yeah, something we have, you ever go back to? We have alternate uh, jokes for every single episode. Yeah, it's ever been there's, written. There's sort of a show. running. We have a running <laughs> bit uh, in in the writers' room. Uh, a, a sort of a, the joke is that the alt file is kind of like it's this weird like kind of dungeon that jokes <laughs> get sent to, and uh, every time a joke goes there, like we, we imagine the jokes as you know each joke is 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 a, an inmate in this crazy prison, and you know when a new one arrives. You know he'll be like, "Hey, I'm the, I'm the the uh, the fart joke from uh, from page 17." You know they, they they put me here in the alt file because uh, you know they they they, they want to keep it short. But I'm in the alt file, so that means I'll probably uh, you know I, I, on 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 the stage they'll probably pull me out and they'll remember me and that I'll make it into the show. And all the older jokes that have been there for years, they're like, son, you 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 never make it. <laughs> You're gonna be stuck on this blue page forever. Yeah. Now, Jenny, were you a writer before you came here? Did you do any writing before you got to the show? Yeah, I, I did lots of writing before I got to the show. None of it actually was ever, you know, I was never paid for it, That's but okay. <laughs> I did plenty of writing. So now tell us about this experience. Uh, this was this was great. This was really exciting for me. Um, I was thrilled to get a, a chance to actually write an episode of the show. Um, and, you know, of course, I was terribly nervous to disappoint Carter oh. and Craig. <laughs> Uh, but it's it's been great. It was fun getting to actually sit in the writer's room and, and pitch jokes and not have to type them down, and it was it was good. Yeah, I, I, I it, uh, Jenny did a phenomenal job. Uh, I'd I'd like to add we uh, uh, Jenny Jenny is the the third script coordinator 
to uh, uh, write an episode for the, uh, Matt Kuhn and uh, Craig Gerard, who's uh, writing partners with Matt Zinman, also had that position. And uh, I think one of the great things that Jenny brought to the script is that uh, she, it, it, this job is a great way to really be in the thick of it and know how writers' rooms work and know like how like I, I feel like there was never a moment that. Craig and I didn't trust that Jenny would have the voice of the show perfectly because she's been in there day in, day out, slogging it out, actually doing the typing for us. And so she. Thanks. Yeah. Now, speaking of the voice of this episode, it's filthy. I, wa- <laughs> I, I, I stepped onto the stage and actually overheard the standards and practices lady. I wrote it down. She says, We might have to take away a boner, the cocks, and the coming. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. What 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 wound up uh, not surviving not surviving the uh, the final cut? We, we we definitely lost a boner. Mm-hmm. We definitely uh, that one boner went away. Uh, wow. It's man, it's tough. You don't you don't set out to write a dirty episode, but then suddenly you look at the finished product. And <laughs> uh, I, my my grandmother just turned ninety five, I think ninety ninety three ninety three. And uh, she watches the show every week, and yeah, uh, that makes me a little sad. But you know, if it's fun, if it's funny enough that it's it's worth even knowing that my grandmother's going to see it, then then we generally did the cox, keep it in. cox cox make it. Cox cox made it with. Uh, made it, yeah. It made it in. We had to spell out the word beforehand. So oh yeah, yeah. That you knew we were talking C O X. Yeah, that was important. Yes. And did the Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you yeah. coming? Stayed in. That stayed in. Yeah, <laughs> hands down, my favorite joke in the season. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> can, while we're talking about jokes, can I just pause just to? I'm gonna just do a little sidebar, a little appendix. Let's do it. Because uh, Jenny just did the uh, uh, general ideas thing and she saluted, and I want to acknowledge Alec Alec Lev sitting here with us. Craig and I, I don't think America knows <laughs> this. Craig and I went to college with Mr. Lev, and he, I, I wasn't even really part of this little, this tiny little cabal. It was mainly Craig, Alec, and our friend Joel, uh, and I remember they, I, I came to the party very late, but they, for years, had been doing the general, the, the, the saluting joke that, that Ted and Robin do on the show, and that's that's where that comes from. And I, I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead right here on this podcast and take credit for it. That I, I, yeah, I, uh, well, that, that I it, wasn't sure exactly who it, who it came from, but. Anything uh, yeah. that's stupid. Yeah, came probably <laughs> from my yeah. direction, and that was definitely what I, I was. I was briefly on the show in season one. I ran down a street. I had a That's line, right. Lily Marshall. But the saluting was my proudest moment. Seeing it, seeing that it was up uh, on the it, 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 It's one of those like I, I think yeah like the that's part of the fun of this job has been just sort of curating the museum of just stupid silly bits that you've picked up over the years of, that friends do, and like that that's definitely one of them that. My my wife Always and gets I, a laugh. my wife and I also shared a toothbrush. And that's right. Craig told me that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, he said that, that was loosely ah. based on. That. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. As well. Um, now this episode is, uh, among other things, about pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Jenny, uh, you are you are. Yes, of, I am. You are of child. Mm-hmm. You are I with am. child. And um, <laughs> and did. Uh, how, how did this influence your writing? Well, oh, it, uh, I guess it helped, certainly, when you think about what Marshall and Lily are going through. Was, uh, we didn't exactly have the problems that they had, <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. put it delicately. <laughs> uh, but it helped. it's a good perspective to have, I guess, coming to the script, having just been going through seven or eight months of this. And, uh, but, yeah. We we didn't have the same problem. <laughs> Marshall and Lily have. <laughs> uh, last question. I always like to know what your writing process is. Are you sitting there with music on? Are you alone? Are you in a coffee shop? Are you here? Uh, I worked in my house with my cat on my lap, um, and I basically took the outline that we had come up with in the room and dropped it into the screenwriting program and made a bunch of slug lines so I knew what scenes I was writing and had the end of the script all in there before I started. That's so <laughs> important. The That's the most important thing. part. I know. It's horrible trying to write and not have the ending already there. 
Yeah. I like lots of filled up pages. What was it like to hear other people pitch on these jokes that you're... Oh, I was grateful that people came in and pitched on my jokes and made them funnier. And having been a writer's assistant for three years, four years, uh, I was I was pretty familiar with the process. So it's not like it was a surprise that I was going to take my script in and then it was going to change. So it was, you know, exactly what I expected and hoped would happen. Very cool. There you go. Any, any other tidbits on this episode that, of course, the numbers... Oh, where did that, oh, yeah. where did the numbers come from? That uh uh that was uh, um there was I, uh, this is going back to like I think in high school I saw a trailer. I didn't even see the movie, but I saw a trailer for this crazy art house movie called Drowning by Numbers and people can look this up. It's not available on DVD. It's it's that <laughs> obscure. Uh it was directed by Peter Greenaway, uh a, a crazy British art house director. Uh, who think I I think just did some museum piece about the Ten Commandments in New York or something like that, uh, but anyway, um, he made this movie Drowning by Numbers that we just ripped off wholesale for this episode, uh, where uh, it, apparently and I, I I've only read about it I haven't actually seen the movie uh, as I said but uh, it uh, you see the numbers one through a hundred uh, throughout the movie sort of ticking up in in the background of the shot. And I always thought that was really cool, and I don't know, and and it, and it also like it it, I think we wanted to have something. We wanted to f- find some way to subtly, like, uh, add uh, uh, add um, sort of this this the the gathering storm clouds to the episode and give the sense of of uh, of something approaching, uh, of, of building to something, and and it felt like a fun way to sort of slip into the background. Um, it was, I, 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 there aren't enough, there is not a long enough standing ovation that, that <laughs> we could muster for uh, our props department and yeah. our post, de- uh, the post production department. Uh, uh, some of the numbers you see are, are, were added digitally, uh, and, but a lot of them were, uh, just our props department making tons of little like labels for beers and like uh, magazines and books and yeah it was it was a big week for them and they always kind of indulge our crazy whims and uh, it's very cool the, seeing the final product it is amazing to see the 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 script is read at the table on Monday shot on Wednesday Thursday and Friday and it is amazing the number of things that get built, that get fabricated, yeah, in yeah. forty-eight hours, yeah, out of absolutely, yeah, and, and to watch them sitting around a table, and you guys, we here's where we need the 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 Swan Fountain, and you just have someone just very quietly writing it down, Swan Fountain, yeah. yeah. There's no question. Oh, I'll get you the Swan Fountain. When's it? I got I got the Swan Fountain. Coming. It's very difficult not to turn into Elvis, like when you're in that situation. Yeah. Like it really, like I I just uh, I can't say enough about our props department because they really because I I think I especially uh, am really guilty of just. You know, you'll you'll be on the set and you'll have an idea and you'll say, well, I wish I had this idea three days ago, but I'm having it now. Nothing can be done about that, but it would be so cool if this little thing was in the episode. And and there's always that moment where you're just debating in your head, like, do I do this? Do I do I bring this up or do I just let it go? And you think like, well, it's a good idea. I'll mention it. And you mention it, and just bam, it's done. Like they're off and running, and they they like. You I'll give an example. The the uh, the uh, the gingerbread house from the uh, uh, from uh, false positive. Uh, it, it initially that whole we're going back now to a, an episode but that whole uh, Ted uh, waiting outside for the gang and one by one they show up and then we keep cutting back to that throughout the episode and uh, ultimately he, he, he yells at them and, and sort of puts them all in check uh, he uh, th- I think that was the day of the day that we were going to shoot we shot that at night and the day like around three in the afternoon we were sort of going over those scenes one more time to make sure all the jokes were as good as they could be and that idea came up of that Ted brought a gingerbread house to the movie as his Christmas themed movie snack it, originally it was just we need something, some physical way to, to really sell this moment of that's it, Ted's snapping, it's time to start yelling at everyone because nothing else has worked and, and smashing something felt good and then it's our Christmas episodes so we're thinking what, what Christmas, Christmassy thing could he smash 
and uh, Gingerbread House came up, and it was like, oh, and, and there's an extra joke of that you go see a Christmas movie, you bring that as your snack to the movie. Oh, oh, that was all what went into it, but, you know, then it's it's 3 o'clock, we shoot that when the sun goes down at 6, and this is in November, when it, which feels like the Christmas season, but it was uh, well before anyone had made a <laughs> gingerbread house, so it yeah. really was. They had to, our props department, God love them, just scrambled, got uh, the got the stuff to make a gingerbread house and made three gingerbread houses like really fast <laughs> and then by by the time cameras were rolling ted's holding a gingerbread house and he smashes it and it was great but uh it was a uh, yeah it's stuff like that that you just you you marvel at uh how good people are at their jobs yeah and how bad i am at my job <laughs> that it took me that long to think of it thank you both very much thank you thank you And that'll do it for this week's podcast. Remember to watch How I Met Your Mother on CBS Monday nights and every day in syndication. Check your local listings. Learn more and watch exclusive clips at cbs.com. Find us on Facebook on both the How I Met Your Mother page and the Robin Sparkles fan page. And follow us on Twitter at himyum underscore CBS, himyum prod, himyum underscore writers, and bros life. My name is Alec Lev, and thanks for listening.